Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another bike review video um, introducing my Trek Slash Plus 99. The Slash Plus 99 is a top of the line lightweight EMTB built to feel like a traditional bike. I got it to replace my full powered RE10 Peak because I wanted something that didn't feel quite as big and burly. Throughout the video I'll go over some positives and negatives from the inaugural ride. An easy positive to start us out is how beautiful this machine looks. Um, I've done one, one run <laughs> so far on it down Mr. Bones, literally just to kind of look at the suspension, get a feel of the bike, um, and now we're gonna do Slick Jimmy. And I think it goes without saying that I did not pay for this bike um, fully. <laughs> the value just doesn't seem there for me. There are two build options, both of them carbon. The 9.9 retails for $12,000 and allegedly comes with the best everything, and the 9.7 retails for $8,000 but comes with a Fox Rhythm Fork and Performance Flodex shock. The 9.9 simply costs too much and the 9.7 doesn't have a good enough spec. I wish Trek would have released this as a frame only option. The only reason I could have afforded this is because I work at Trek and I was able to purchase it with my employee discount. That being said, my channel isn't affiliated with them, so all of these thoughts are entirely my own. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so far on like that, it does feel still pretty big. Um, but having the mullet wheel set so far, I think it's just making it a lot more playful than my other large e-bike. I think this added a lot to help with the maneuverability of the bike. It was pretty easy to put the back wheel where I wanted, but most importantly, it cornered like an absolute dream. The frame feels pretty stiff, which means I had to commit to the corner and the compliance was there. Plus, the smaller rear wheel and air shock made it feel a little easier to pop and get off the ground. Hope it's clear. Oh yeah. Oh, almost missed that down tree. The 9.9 came with a Bontrager SE5 rear and SE6 in the front. They're both 2.5 width, but lack the sidewall durability. For brand new tires, I felt my traction was less than ideal. I'm gonna try another ride on them, but we'll most likely switch to the tried and true PNW combo of the Asagai and DHR2. Yeah, a little bit tighter, steeper turns, but so far I do like how the bike is maneuvering around it. Um, even though I'm not like used to the bike at all, it's still doing quite well. And my gosh, these Maven brakes are crazy powerful. Really happy they put some Mavens on here. First experience with them too. But in the past, I very much enjoy my Code RSCs. Um, I've been on some XTs for a bit now, but oh yeah, oh my gosh, this bike really comes alive at speed. I have to disagree with Dale Stone about the feel of the Mavens. Uh -huh. I truly think they were incredible, like the lever fell crate and my hands never tired. Plus, flying down a mountain on a 46 pound bike can be scary, but having the peace of mind that I can stop with ease is a huge bonus. Additionally, the GX T-Type shifts phenomenally, and the suspension felt decent. It's top of the line RockShox stuff, but truthfully, I haven't ran an AirShock for a while, so it'll take me some time oh, to dial that in. That's definitely rides more like a traditional bike and seriously came alive I, I got picked up speed like once on that upper section and it just like <laughs> it plowed through so oh man ah! oh no ow I landed on a rock and it hit me, that one, I hit that one.
All right, now we got a smoother. Oh man. Yes. Ah, he's trying to whip a little bit. Yeah. This part is so good with these jumps. Yeah. Oh, I love that section. It's so fun. This bike like rewards you for just going. Like it really just wants you to go. All right, here's in the forest. Super fun. Yeah, this. This corner, so good. Oh gosh. Roll this. Wow. All right, we're starting to, we're starting to figure it out. Yeah, much more of a traditional bike feel, even with the motor, um, which honestly, is a huge, huge reason why I got it. The motor is probably the biggest reason why I got the bike. The TQ system packs in 50 newton meters of torque with a 580 watt battery. It's a decently lightweight package that brings the bike to a total of 46 pounds, but it still has enough juice to support a 6800 feet of vert on day one. I could even opt for a range extender which would add another 160 watts. The motor is also exceptionally quiet. My only gripe so far is the stock TQ settings are not set up that well. There are three assist modes, but the last one only gave me about 75% of the torque capacity. I changed the settings so level 1 feels like I'm pedaling my acoustic bike, level 2 is a good mid-level assist that I can use for most of the day, and level 3 is maximum motor effort for the punchiest of climbs. Again, this TQ setup is a massive reason why the Slash Plus feels and looks like an acoustic bike. This negative isn't really related to Trek. The 99 came with a 170mm RockShox reverb dropper post. I'm a firm believer that all size large bikes should at minimum come with a 200mm dropper post. However, RockShox doesn't make that in a wireless setup, yet. The dropper feels good and works great, however I have to raise the seat post up a bit for a good climbing position. Now I love it when I can put the seat post all the way to the collar and the entire dropper length works for my climbing position. That section of DNR is really chunky and I've never felt more stable through it. I was sold on the high pivot design for my Deviant Highlander and the belief continues with the Slash Plus. The biggest benefit of the main pivot being higher up is it creates a rearward axle path, meaning the wheel will move out and up instead of just up which greatly helps square edge hit compliance. Or to put it more simply, it feels better in the chunk.
I'm 5'10 and I went with a large. I typically love truck sizing because of their medium large option which works incredible for 5'9 to 5'11 riders. However, unlike the acoustic version, the Slash Plus does not come in that wonderful medium large option. Given a few recommendations, I went with the large despite my hesitations with upsizing and e-bikes. Now my Tim Peak is also a large and at first I loved it, but I found it hard to move around. Now the size felt good on the Slash Plus, but we'll see how I feel when I ride some tighter, slower, and more technical tracks. Whew. Okay, this will be the true, true test. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> Little nose heavy. The seat sucks. Now, saddles are quite specific, and I have a model that works really well for my sit bones, so no matter what, I was planning on changing this. Gosh. <laughs> oh man. Whew. Okay, we barely made it to the top for the second to last lap. Skip the last. Batteries at 7%. Um, I had to crank it totally down and um, put in the easiest gear and just mosey my way back up. I want to reiterate on the TQ system. 580 watts of battery with 50 newton meters of force enabled me to do 6,800 feet of climbing and descending. That's 22.1 miles in 3 hours and 45 minutes, which is very solid in my book. It is wet over here. The drop open. Sure it was. Oh. 
I should have just popped that. Yeah, this bike's a lot easier to maneuver than I thought it was going to be. But my legs are so tired. Even on a new bike, today is a big day. So, I'm not going to try and push anything. I just want to get back to my car safely. There will be plenty of times to really dial in the bike. Yeah, I just let it open up here. Oh, man. Okay. It's kind of funny, like how wet the upper portion was and how dry everything else is. Oh gosh. <laughs> I like almost lost it right before the gap. We'll step up. Man, this bike corners so well. I think so far that's my favorite thing is just how this bike corners. Like it seriously feels so good. This is a jump to nowhere. Oh, there's a little transition now. Yeah, that was the first ride, first initial impressions, first ride on the Slash Plus. I think it's going to work out really good. I've got to dial in the suspension a bit. Yeah, I'm excited to add this to the quiver. Like I said, I will be selling my Tim Peak. If you're interested in buying it, I'll post on Facebook here soon, but maybe it's already posted by the time this video comes out. Anyway, um, thanks again, everyone, for so much support. Uh, following along this journey. Really appreciate it. Like the video, subscribe, whatever. Don't forget the most important trail of the day is the next one. Can't wait to see you in the next video. I'm gonna go get pizza. <laughs> okay, bye.